exploration has driven society since the beginning of time. Our thirst for discovery and exploring the unknown makes us human. Now that the world is embarking on its new odyssey to Mars, we must take the proper measures to promote safety and sustainability for generations to come. That is why the Mars Rover Research Utilization Team has been exploring the feasibility of research utilization on Mars. And today, we are going to be giving a brief overview about what we've been doing these past few weeks. Today, we will be going over the purpose of ISRU, its applications to a future crewed mission to Mars and beyond, and how this all ties into a joint rover and helicopter mission. This is our team. Hi, I'm Andre Nunes, and I'm from Silver Spring, Maryland. Hi, my name is Giselle Ransom. I'm a rising junior, and I live in Hearst, Texas. Hello, my name is Haley Peterson, and I'm a rising junior from Waters Meet, Michigan. Hi, my name is Lily Segna, and I'm a rising senior from Portland, Oregon. I'm Matthew Martinez, and I'm from Las Piedras, Puerto Rico. Hi, my name is Zara Renizzi, and I'm a rising junior from Miami, Florida. And here's our background on Mars, Minerals, and ISRU, and I'll hand it off to Matthew. You're probably wondering, why should we care about this? Well, this mission will expand our knowledge as a collective whole and revolutionize the way we study and think about celestial objects. With this, we will test how good we are breaking barriers. These are the rovers that inspired our rover design and what a rover should be looking for, such as various useful minerals and radiation levels. Now moving on to Mars history of the environment. Now, we want to consider many conditions and factors in Mars environment, including atmosphere, terrain, temperatures, water, weather, gravity, physical features, radiation, and living organisms. Now, the atmosphere in Mars is very thin, temperatures are very cold, terrain is very tough, water is very sparse, and everything above that makes missions very hard. So we have to work around all these factors. Due to Mars' extremely thin atmosphere, it is under constant exposure from different types of radiations from space. This can lead to increased threat levels from events such as solar flares, which accelerate all energetic particles within its vicinity. This also means that it has no protection from the UV radiations that are coming from the sun. Additionally, the effect that space travel has on our cardiovascular system can be devastating. While we're in space, we experience a free fall sensation which disables our blood vessel's ability to properly retract and open, causing them to stay small and tight while we're in space. This will prevent proper blood flow from reaching all parts of our body. Also, the distance between Earth and Mars and the time it takes to travel between the two planets means that if something goes wrong, we most likely won't be able to provide support in time. ISRU is the process of collecting, processing, and the use of materials, such as what MOXIE does. MOXIE stands for Mars Oxygen in Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, which converts carbon dioxide into oxygen and is the first ISRU technology demonstration on Mars. During our research, we found several useful minerals on the Martian surface. These are olivine, iron oxides, sulfates, carbonates, ice, and phyllosilicates. These can be used for a variety of reasons, like construction, iron, oxygen, water resources, tools and parts manufacturing, cement, and most importantly, propellant, which can help us getting in and out of the Martian surface. With all that in mind, let's talk about our primary mission objectives. Since our project is centered around space exploration, it is prudent to align our goals with those of NASA and the Human Exploration and Operation Program, investigating and developing technology to sustain human presence beyond the current limits of humankind. But what sets our project apart from previous Mars missions? Rovers like Perseverance and Curiosity have focused on answering questions about the environment on Mars, both past and present. Instead, our mission turns towards the future. How can we sustain a crewed mission on Mars? However, it takes far more than just a goal to create an entire Mars ro mission. Let's talk about our rover itself. We started with a mission patch. Drawn in the center is our rover, Valor, and off to the side is our Martian helicopter, Venture. We picked the name Valor to encompass NASA's nomenclature for Mars rovers, exemplifying a trait crucial to exploration. Other than its main body, which hosts the brain and ChemCam, Valor's design features a mast and robotic arm to aid a few instruments in gathering data. 
This blueprint was made using a CAD-like software and gives a rough image of what the rover should look like. Now we will introduce the instrument payload, which will be used by the Valor and Venture spacecraft. We will be talking about Andron. Andron was used on the ExoMars rover and it will now be used by the Valor rover. It identifies and analyzes subsurface water and hydrogen mineral abundance for extraction. The purpose of this instrument is to analyze subsurface water and hydrated mineral abundance to know where to extract these things via drilling for future crewed missions. Now, ChemCam, which will be mounted on the robotic arm, will analyze the chemical and mineralogical composition of nearby rocks and soils that have ISRU potential. Now, we will take a look at the radiation assessment detector, also called RAD. RAD will help us measure all the strong radiation signatures on the Martian surface. With this, we will be able to determine the effects of radiation on future Mars explorers. The purpose of the robotic arm is to support and facilitate analysis on ChemCam as it analyzes the geological features of places that are hard for the rover itself to reach. TAGSAM is a touch-and-go analyzer that will collect samples of subsurface ice, water, and phyllosilicates, helping us gain an understanding of the underground composition of Mars. This was actually inspired by the TAGSAM on the OSIRIS-REx mission, which served the same purpose but on an asteroid. Now we will talk about PANCAM. This instrument was aboard the ExoMars rover, and it will now be used by the Valor and Venture spacecrafts. This instrument takes panoramic color images of the Martian's terrain, sun, and sky. With this instrument, we will be able to map out and find potential landing sites for future crewed missions. The purpose for this instrument is to measure atmospheric pressure, temperature, humidity, winds, and ultraviolet radiation levels to detect storms and possible harmful weather. Now to the next instrument, the Sample Analysis at Mars, also called SAM. This instrument was on board the Curiosity rover, and it will now be used by the Venture spacecraft. This instrument identifies a wide range of carbon-containing compounds, which can be used for future crewed missions to Mars. But what good are instruments without locations at which to use them? Here you see a map of our entire mission. Structured over a two-year time period, Venture and Valor will start their mission in the landing ellipse pictured in yellow to the right. After visiting eight nearby locations in the primary missions, more about that later, the rover and helicopter duo will visit three secondary mission sites, pictured in blue, orange, and pink. The final scheduled research location is the tertiary mission, which is in green to the far left of the map. If we travel down to the primary mission, we can pinpoint where exactly the rover will visit. The red X represents the spot where Valor and Ventral will touch down on the surface of Mars after which they'll follow the dashed blue traverse path. On the map, orange indicates a high priority site, pink represents medium priority, and blue represents low priority. The acronym ROI above the orange site stands for region of interest, and it means the rover will spend additional time at those sites running further analyses. But first off, let's go a little more in depth on the primary mission. We classified these two sites as high priority because of the large concentration of water ice suspected to be present in those areas. Each location will be investigating using three instruments, TAGSAM to collect samples, ChemCam for comprehensive imagery, and Adrian RM for water ice analysis. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to medium priority sites, which we're gonna measure using the instrument ChemCam, and the potential value would be the carbonate, olivine, iron and sulfate located in these regions. Now moving on to the low priority sites, which we're going to be observing using the pan cam and the potential value would just be surface imagery of potential ice, including either surface or maybe subsurface ice. Now moving on to the calculations for the primary sites. So we mostly calculated for speed and time and this data collected we use perseverance and curiosity data to actually choose our speeds. And as you can see the, from this first table, the first column is distance, second column is difficulty depending on the terrain type, which is the third column. Speed is our fourth column. Fifth column is the time actually calculated. And then the last column is gonna be our classification.
And this is the Traverse Calculations Part 2. This is the same setup, just with different distances. And here's our second animation. For Site 9, we'll be using ChemCan and PacSan on the Valor Rover, and we can find hydrated silica and silicon here. The terrain is known as a rock strewn plain. And for Site 10, we'll be using ChemCan on the Valor Rover. Here we could find calcium, magnesium, iron, and pyroxene. And the terrain is known as a smooth plain. And for Site 11, we'll be using PanCam on Valor. Here we could find phyllosilicates, silicon, and clay. And finally, we have the tertiary mission. A primary concern for crewed missions on Mars is the harmful effects of radiation on the human body. One possible solution is the utilization of lava tubes under the Martian surface for human habitation. In the green ellipse on this picture, you can see a darkened line in the rock. This is suspected to be a collapsed lava tube, and scientists expect there to be more non-collapsed lava tubes in the nearby vicinity. So, after completing the primary and secondary missions, Venture and Valor will travel over to these lava tubes. Valor will analyze the radiation levels and sediment makeup of the collapsed tube, while Venture will find a nearby uncollapsed tube and fly in it to explore and analyze the radiation levels. And now, on to the mission's possible next steps. So you might be wondering where another site would be for a subsequent mission on Mars. Well, one of the sites we chose was the Nili Fosse. The Nili Fosse consists of faults up to 500 meters deep. Then we chose this site because it is known to be rich in olivine minerals. Now moving on to future crewed missions. So what are the next steps that we need to take for an actual crewed mission? Well, it includes many factors, including infrastructure, energy source, transportation to and from Mars, agriculture, communication, waste disposal, and better spacesuits. Now, we will reflect on our challenges, highlights, and experiences from the SEAS internship. I went into this program with nearly no prior knowledge of space, and I got to learn about what NASA is doing to get people on Mars and the composition of the Red Planet. Now, for my reflection, I loved being able to not only learn about Mars, but apply the information and research to an actual rover mission scenario. I came into this without knowing too much about Mars. I'm happy that I was able to work with an amazing team to create a mission to Mars and create an experience that I will never forget. Ever since watching a documentary about the Spirit and Opportunity rovers, I've always wondered what it would be like to design a rover mission from the ground up. The SEAS program gave me a chance to do just that, and on top of it all, I got to work with an absolutely incredible team. I really enjoyed the SEAS internship experience because it taught me to work as a team, and I also learned more about Mars than ever before. As an intern, I got to step into the shoes of a real scientist and conduct research using real-world data that can impact our understanding of Mars. I'll forever appreciate the SEAS program and the impact that it had on my career ambitions. And now a big thank you to our mentor, SJ Ralston. You helped us so much and we wouldn't be able to do this without you. Thank you so much. On behalf of the Mars Rover Resource Utilization Team, I would like to thank the SEAS Program, Texas Space Grant Consortium, and NASA. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Are there any questions at this time?